diabetes doesn't happen overnight. It was a series of bad choices. Um, it, it just happened. So you're not going to fix it overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, right. it takes time. And, and, and being able, like the thing with the animal proteins is like, there's a lot of saturated fat in there. And if they shot it up with a hormone, or if they did some kind of preservative on the meat, like to make it so it stayed a pretty color in the grocery store. You know, there's lots of stuff that goes in there. What kind of soil was it raised on? What kind of food was it given? The better your body can break things down, the more likely you're gonna get rid of the waste and save the nutrients. The, yeah. the, 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 the hard part is it becomes a vicious cycle. So you eat poorly, then the digestive system gets overburdened, then it can't do its job of separating out good from bad. So then you end up holding bad. All right, welcome back everybody to our next episode of uh, collaborating with high quality healthcare professionals in the Maryland area and beyond. Um, I am so excited to have Dave Rolls back on with us of Chef for Health. Dave just recently uh, competed in the World Championship of Vegan Cooking. So that is an amazing, amazing accomplishment out in Texas. Can't wait to hear a bit more about that. Uh, Dave has um, been a, uh, a the poster child for how to turn your health around with food so much so that he is now teaching and uh, has his own company where he is helping people to eat health, eat a healthy diet and to, to become healthy people. And so, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to have Dave on again, and you can hear his story on our other uh, video that we did introducing Dave. Um, but today, one of the things that Dave did was he completely, you know, he was able to completely reverse his diabetes, right, Dave? So uh, absolutely. Thought, yeah. So I thought it would be great for our audience to hear um, some strategies for, you know, first off, just that this is possible, that somebody who has oh, yeah. diabetes can now, you know, be medication free, literally medication free. And it, mm -hmm. you know, it was really around food that that did it. And so we want to get into some of the things that you did that you added to your diet, some of the things that you started to take away from your diet, any kind of dietary systems that have been beneficial, and just like some strategies that people can can utilize to help them yeah. to bring their blood sugar down. So thanks again for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thanks for having me on. Well, one of the biggest thing too is you want to make sure when you start this program, things are going to happen faster than you think. When I did your um, elimination diet a year ago, my blood sugar dropped 100 points in a week. The week, the first week we were there, the second week we went vegan, it dropped another 30 points, and then I was able to like keep it keep it vegan for a while for about eight months. Did another A1C, and it was down to seven. It was 10.5 the August before. So being able to do that and, and knock it down, um, and so my doctor. We worked very closely together. I worked closely with you and I worked closely with my doctors um, to be able to get off the medication because you don't want to just go, you know, go do this. So I highly recommend that you open a channel up with your doctors and talk to them and tell them what you're doing. So that way, because if you're on a lot of medications and you go in and all of a sudden you're plant strong and you're eating the proper diet um, to help you. You could really kind of bottom out. Um, you could go hypo, like same make. There's lots of bad things could happen. So make sure that you're in contact with your doctor first and foremost. So um, one of the things here, I'm going to read you a couple numbers here. One in three people in the United States have some sort of diabetes, um, whether it's type one, type two. There's a type and a half. There's actually a type three now, which they're linking to Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. um, which is in older adults. Um, but it's one in three Medicare dollars go to some kind of diabetes care. Um, the standard American diet, which is SAD, which we call SAD, um, processed convenience food, fast food chains, restaurant are the leading causes of type 2 diabetes. Um, the average American consumes, you're going to get this one, 152 pounds of sugar and four, 146 pounds of flour every year in the processed foods. So one of the things I eliminated, and it, it helps to be a chef, but just as a cook in general, that's a, that's a pound of sugar every three days. Yeah. Wow. No, yeah. every, almost every, uh, just a little over every two days, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's insane. But um, yeah, with the whole, with the whole thing, with the, the standard American diet and there's tons of research out there. Um, I'll give you a list of references later on as we get going. 
nine in 10 Americans are, have some kind of metabolic um, disease. So they're either high blood pressure, they got high sugar, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, um, the whole nine yards. So it's, it's really a big thing right now. So by eliminating the amount of processed foods that I ate and I went, you can go vegan, but you don't have to go that far. Just like do the meatless Mondays, you know, where you're making something or you don't like have to have meat be the center point. You can have, you know, especially red meat, but, you know, do your, like we were talking about earlier, where you've got three parts of the plate has vegetables on it, whether it's a steamed or a salad, have a salad for breakfast. I love those. But, um, and then just have a smaller four ounce piece of protein. Um, you know, it, it'll help, it'll, your body will start to change so quickly, especially if you're pre-diabetic. Studies show that like you can totally reverse your pre-diabetic status just by changing to a little bit more whole foods diet, um, like not processed and not out of a box. That was one of the things I was talking about at the World Food Championships in Dallas. I was talking to a couple um, celebrity chefs down there and they were very interested in what I did. But it's like if you've got something or you've got a, an ingredient box and you can't tell what what's in it or you can't read the the labels on the side, you don't know what that means, like what that word is, Google it, see what it says. Mm -hmm. But there are over 50 different words for sugar in the English dictionary for all these fake sugars. So one of the things that I didn't do where I stopped doing was I stopped drinking diet sodas. Um, diet sodas have like all those different kinds in there. They're linked to memory loss. Um, diabetes, of course, um, Dr. Mark Hyman calls it uh, diabetes water. <laughs> So it's one of the things like sodas, I, I cut out sodas and even if like do it for a week, and see what happens. Yeah. You know, and it was funny because my wife was the same way and I'm like, she drank Diet Coke all the time. I was like, try eliminating that and see how it goes. And mm -hmm. she was like, she goes, dang it, you're right. She goes, you want my record? You want to record it? You were right. Um, so that's huge. Um, the next thing I did too is I, I I stopped alcohol, which I was like, oh, but on the Mediterranean diet, like if you have that glass of wine, you know, once a week, twice a week, um, especially red wines, because they have a lot of good tannins and antioxidants in it. You know, that's a good way to go. Um, and, but it's just like, I'm not, I was a line cook for a while. So I was like, you know, we're hammering shift drinks all the time. <laughs> so that was bad. But we're also getting, um, trying to think what else I, I avoid. I don't eat a lot of rice. I mean, it's not a bad carb, um, but rice is rice. So it's still carbohydrates. So it still breaks down the same. I've moved to more like farro, which is more of an ancient grain, has more fiber to it. Mm -hmm. um, fiber is very important in, in your diet, um, as you know. So to keep things moving. Um, now, right now we're getting ready to head into the holiday. So is there any supplements that you would recommend for like a diabetic or? For sure, for sure. Before, was. before we jump there, I want to ask one more thing to you because I'm I'm really interested in what you're what you've been doing from like a food standpoint. So the foods that you're talking about were those. So you you started this journey a year ago, and you went you you you. I mean, the, this idea, you know, to have dropped 130 points in your blood sugar, 135 points is no small feat. And I think some of the people listening might feel like this doesn't sound like it even adds up that you 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 basically just kind of like have a small piece of protein and uh and some vegetables and then all of a sudden your blood sugar dropped 135 points so i just want to stay here for just another minute because i it sounds crazy to a lot of people that it's that possible so all of these things that you're talking about were were what were your habits before when the, when your blood sugar was up 135 points and you know it's right like, okay i switched from rice to farro okay yeah yes all that's good rice to quinoa yeah you know, but what what were you relate you know just to relate to some of the people that have diabetes now and you know like how did you get there and what was you know and then and then what was the drag because there's something that is drastic about that shift but right so, so talk a little just just for another minute okay. about about that yeah. just, we can kind of connect that the dots well that was one of the things too um when my a1c i was on seven different medications last august my a1c was 10.5 um my doctor was going to gift me with an insulin pump for christmas if i didn't figure it out so my back was against the wall so when we came into the elimination diet you know we get rid of uh you know nuts seeds dairy cheese all that kind of stuff 
Um, before that, I was eating just a regular standard American diet. I love McDonald's. I love Burger King. I love eating that kind of stuff, going out to eat all the time, uh, heavy creams, heavy sauces. I'm a chef, so we're always using butter and heavy cream. Um, so being able to switch to a whole foods, plant-based diet where it was vegetables. And that's, like you said, I, I, you know, I started eating salads for breakfast. I would have maybe like two eggs. And this is after I was, while I was vegetarian, because eggs are legal when you're vegetarian, which is kind of funny. Um, but I started eating a couple of eggs here and there. Um, not a lot, but just like every other day, um, having salads with breakfast um, eating more leafy, dark leafy greens because they fill you up and they have a lot of good nutrients in them. Um, trying to think what else it's like, I went to, um, forks over knives cooking school so I could learn how to cook vegetables better. Yeah. So that was huge because at one point, like I don't use the SOS, which is salt oils and sugar are the things, th three things that you want to avoid in any diet. So you want to really watch your sugars because it's hidden in everywhere. You got high fructose corn syrup in everything. You know, it's in jelly, it's in ketchup, it's, you know, it's in bread and, you know, and it doesn't, your body doesn't know what to do with that. You know, yes. we have to think back to like 10,000 years ago, you know, what were we eating, you know, and how often were we eating? Were we eating three or four meals a day and snacking in between? You know, our bodies aren't built to eat all that bread or eat all that or drink all that all the time you know we're more hunter gatherers kind of people so i really think that that's that's where our bodies haven't changed you know just what we eat has changed so yeah we're one of the richest countries in the world and it's almost like we're overfed we're almost like everything is so good and then you look at some of the poorer countries in the world and they don't have any cancer they don't have any diabetes they don't have any issues mm -hmm. yeah because yep. they're just eating you know what they have on hand yeah. And so, you know, so just like as a kind of like to just to recap, because I think it's it's really valuable for people to hear some of these strategies. Right. So you don't have to eat a breakfast that you 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 know, that is some kind of bread product. Right. Sweet right. doing a salad for breakfast, doing a piece of if you're not vegetarian or vegan, doing a little piece of fish and, you know, some greens for breakfast, like thinking outside the box so that you are not just following, you know, like a sheep, the, the, the typical pattern. That's a huge thing that you mentioned that you changed for yourself. So on one hand, you have, you know, pre-August, you have egg McMuffin and, you know, like, uh, you know, coffee with, with a ton of cream and sugar. And then yeah. post August, you have a salad and a glass of water. And, you know, that is the big change. Like that is the yeah. shift. Now you also did this big, you know, that our detox, this big elimination diet so that you could get a feel for, okay, what, what is my, you know, day, dietary day like when I cut out anything with, with, um, added sugar, anything with a refined carbohydrate, um, anything with dairy product, anything that has gluten in it, right. Can, can, you know, anything mm -hmm. that's got chemicals or processed food in it. So right. that makes you, it forces you to, um, to utilize whole, whole ingredients, to utilize your, your fruits, your vegetables, your fish, your, your chicken, your, you know, your, your, your good quality beef. And you, you start to put, put together, a, a diet that is filling without all the extra fillers that we typically right. eat. So yeah. I think I just wanted to kind of bring that. I appreciate you kind of talking about your before and after, because those are the kinds of strategies that somebody who has a blood sugar of 150 is going to go like, Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't think I can do it, you know, but you can mm -hmm. do it. You, it. you just have to get yourself used to a new way of, right. of operating. And, right. And you have to want to do it. I mean, like I said, my back was against the wall and I didn't want an insulin pump and I didn't like, you know, taking all the medications and stuff like that. Yeah. And if you take like fruit is like fructose. So that's a natural sugar. Yeah. You take the stuff that's in a candy bar or a chocolate cake. That's not a natural sugar. Mm -hmm. That's not something we're going to find in a, in a field somewhere. So your body doesn't quite know what to do with it. So it stores it. Yeah. Yeah. And then next yeah. thing you know, then you got, then you got issues and diabetes doesn't happen overnight. It was a series of bad choices. Um, it, it just happened. So you're not going to fix it overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, sure. it takes time and, and, and being able like the thing with the animal proteins is like, there's a lot of saturated fat in there. Mm -hmm. And if they shot it up with a hormone 
or if they did some kind of preservative on the meat, like to make it so it stayed a pretty color in the grocery store. You know, there's lots of stuff that goes in there. What kind of soil was it raised on? What kind of food was it given? Um, I have a friend of mine, a French chef, and he was telling me that they changed the soil on his chickens and fed them natural foods that they would normally eat. And the chickens are actually able to like be produce more proteins. They're mm -hmm. smaller, but they're more dense in nutrient yeah. because of the way they change their food and everything else. And you're not going to get that from a mass produced, you know, company. They're not, they're, it's not cost effective. That's right. That's but he was able to do that on his farm. And he said it was amazing what we could do with those chickens once we changed their feed. Yeah. One thing that, that has gotten, you know, that's starting to get a little bit more press is something called regenerative farming. So if anybody's interested mm -hmm. in that, take a look at that. It's really, it's a whole nother topic that we can get into on another, uh, you know, podcast. But <laughs> another day. There's, there's some really yeah. cool stuff happening on small, small farms. You just have to really look for it and find it. And so then let me circle back to you, you know, you had asked about supplements. And so there's, there's some basic things that um, that we that we work with when we work with diabetes, uh, you know, patients. And so one of you know, so so I'll just list off a few things that we typically will, you know, pull from and, you know, not th these aren't going to be for everybody. So there's going to be some combination that we're going to pick out of uh, things like cinnamon, uh, chromium. Um, um, uh, we use um uh, American ginseng. We use uh, um, uh, herbs that help spark digestive process. So things like poria root, things like um, um, attract a lotus, uh, which are more east eastern herbs than versus western herbs. Um, berberine is very commonly used. These are all things that can help to reduce your body's. Uh, uh, processing of, of getting to sugar, you know, getting to that sugar phase slows that process down and also stimulates your, your digestive system so that, um, so that the, the more, the, the, the better your body can break things down, the more likely you're going to get rid of the waste and save the nutrients. The, yeah. the, 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 the hard part is it becomes a vicious cycle. So you eat poorly, then the digestive system gets overburdened, then it can't do its job of separating out good from bad. So then you end up holding bad, then, you, you know, and so what the supplements do is in addition to it speeds the process up. So it helps take all the, the improvements that you're doing from a dietary standpoint. And like you said, for most people, unless you do something drastic, it is a slow process. So the supplements will speed that process up. And that's part of, you know, what you experienced. You got flooded with a lot of really good supplements. And then in addition, change your diet drastically. And you saw this precipitous drop in your, in your blood sugar, right? And right. so th this is the way to do it, right? This is, this is all in the, in the name. Oh, of the absolutely. So. Yeah. And there's so many resources out there too, like to be able to, to switch the whole food. It's not when I my wife and I did about 10, 15 years ago, we had a uh, rip Epstein come through and he has the engine two diet. He's also part of the forks over knives group, mastering diabetes.com. He's part of that group. And um, we tried to do his vegan cookbook and 15 years ago, I wasn't ready. Right. I thought it was all terrible. And I was, I was against it. Um, so fast forwarding now to like the point where my life is the stage that I'm in, I needed to do that. And it's all, you know, and it's all moderation too. I'm not saying you got to, if you want to fix it and you'll be surprised if you just do this for a week, mm. to watch your, watch your numbers come down. Cause it's going to happen. Like I said, keep an open channel with your doctor. Cause it's going to be amazing. And you're going to be impressed and, and your doctor's going to be impressed. Cause I know my doctor's like, what'd you do? That's How'd right. you do that? And, you know, and, and it's like, well, you know. And the reason that the doctors are so surprised is because what happens is there's think of it like a mountaintop, right? So, so you're, you're going, you know, your blood sugar is climbing, climbing, climbing. And when it gets over the edge of that mountaintop to get back is really difficult, right? So that's why yeah. you were saying like pre-diabetic, it's much easier to address this when you're in the pre-diabetic stage than the post-diabetic stage. But once you're in the diabetic stage, when you do something drastic, like you did, it's it's like you're climbing back up over the 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 the, um, the precipice of Everest and then coming back down the other side. And so yeah. once you start coming back down the other side, that's where you need to stabilize it because everything's pulling you the other way. 
it, you know, all this kind of, you know, your blood sugar has been high for X number of months, years, you know, decades, everything's pulling you back towards that whether you know, and so you, so stabilizing it over the course of the first few weeks after, you know, you, you get it under mm-hmm. control. So huge, so huge. Yeah. Well, and, and it's like, I see a lot of people um, working out. Like when I walk my dog in the morning, there's like, there's three gyms in my neighborhood and there's people out running and walking around. And it's like, so what are you backfilling that, you know, that workout with, what are you feeding? What are you refueling your body with? Yeah. You know? And it's like, and I've heard people like, well, I deserve to go. And that's one of the things like, if you deserve today, like, you know, where that comment came from, um, which fast food restaurant it was. Um, So it's like, being able to refill that backfill that workout with something wholesome and not a fast food thing because your body will start to crave the carrots and crave the dark leafy greens. And Mm -hmm. it's really, your body knows best and you need to listen to your body. And that's like, it will tell you what you're doing and what you're, you know, and it's funny because like the other night I was just like, I was hungry for mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. Mm -hmm. So I, did a dry saute with some little beef or a beef broth, little vegetable broth. And um, I just had some mushrooms as a snack. And I, I don't know what it was. There was something missing in my diet and it, was, it really helped. That's, so, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. So fall in love with water. Oh yes, for sure. Get yourself sure. a good glass that you like. This is my, uh, my old bay cup, but um, get something that you like. Um, do you want to talk about the holidays? Yeah, for sure. I love to talk about the holidays. So we are uh, going into them this year. So so talk a little bit about some strategies there that people can utilize. And I guess this would be for anybody, really, <laughs> how, yeah. to, how to manage. So let's talk about that. We've got a few minutes left. So yeah, let's go into it. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest things um, when you're headed to the holiday is just, you know, be mindful of what what's going to be there be ready, be ready for what they're. And if it's something you don't think you're going to want to eat, or you're going to be tempted to eat and you think, don't think you should like the sweet potatoes with the brown sugar and marshmallows, you know, that's probably not your best idea, but if you scrape the marshmallows and the sugar off, eh, maybe, but um, yeah, what I would recommend a one eat before you go. Um, that way you're not as full and you're not hangry and you're not like, like you have more discipline to kind of avoid some certain foods. Um, the second thing would be well, to before bring you something... go there, you know, that's actually a really good point, even for things like going out to eat. So if you're going yeah. out to eat and you eat a little something, we're not talking about a whole meal, but like a handful of nuts and a piece of fruit, um, a little bit of, you know, a salad, something that when you get there, you're not starving. And then you either eat, you eat less and, and, or take some home. So that right. goes for the holidays too. So awesome. Yeah. That was a good yeah. One. And sometimes too, like drink a drink of glass of water. Like when they, when you usually, when you sit down at a restaurant, they give you a glass of water. Mm-hmm. So drink, that first um and then like you said take take half that dish i know it's a weight watchers trick to take Mm -hmm. half that dish and get a carry out dish right away and put it in there because portion sizing in the u.s is crazy like we should not be eating all that much um it's hard for me because i feel like my stomach is shrunk like i can't go out and eat a full meal anymore it just and it's so good and you really want to but there's a lot of sodium and and like different things in there that are just gonna like mess with my blood pressure i can feel it if i was out eating the night before next day i wake up with a headache like i was drinking all night and it's like no it's the sodium in there yeah you know jack my blood pressure up so awesome <laughs> those are great those are great yeah but there's like little things like celery celery if you add celery to a dish whether it's cooked or raw it actually increases the sodium flavor without increasing the sodium. Mm. So you can use celery in dishes and stuff like that to kind of, you know, it's one of my recipe modification tricks that I use. I put celery in there to keep, especially with people with high blood pressure. And so, and there's lots of potassium in there. So it actually lowers your blood pressure. Awesome. So, awesome. yeah. So um, I get, like I said, bring something to share, bring something that you want to eat. Um, maybe a couple dishes. Don't announce that this is your favorite vegan um casserole just put it down on the table and if anybody asks just say yeah this is my mushroom casserole or this is my tvp casserole or whatever um it's kind of funny because they'll turn their nose up on it if they know it's vegan or plant-based oh my god here comes the tree hugger that's eating the weeds so um but the third thing too is um you know intermittent fasting like we talked about earlier um you don't have to do it for three days or just if you you know don't eat after like my thing was i'm a i'm a i work in different 
kitchens. So I don't get off work till 730 and I really can't eat during dinner. So I, I always eat late, which always, I think, affected my diabetes. So to be able to eat earlier in the day, like at six o'clock and maybe have a glass of water or a handful of nuts before you go to bed, that's going to keep your metabolism moving and it's going to make you feel full because nobody likes going to bed hungry. I mean, it's just, you get, it just doesn't work. And then that way, if you go to, you know, you stop eating at say six o'clock, 6 a.m., there's 12 hours into a right. fast. You know, so, and the whole thing with breakfast is break your fast. Right. So this is different, different strategy, right? So we have, so our holiday strategies are eat a little something before you go, uh, bring something that is healthy that you that can be shared and make sure you eat a good portion of that so that that kind of crowds out some of the other foods that that you were talking about, right? Um, uh, drink a glass of water, you know, as soon as you get there and make sure that, you know, you're so that you're not quite so hungry and you don't just go, go hog wild. So those are three really right. good strategies for the holidays. And now we're talking about a strategy like a, a nutritional system strategy. So we went through foods, we went through some supplements, we, we went through holiday strategy. And now you're you're talking about this intermittent fasting, which is like a way of regulating your metabolic function that works well for some people and is really worth a try if you know yeah. you know if that's something that you've you, you know you want to bring into the mix as well yeah well that was one of the things too like pasta like i love italian food but in italy the pasta is kind of a side dish mm -hmm. you got your sauce and then you've got all these vegetables over here mm -hmm. it's not like a big plate of, of spaghetti or linguine with a bunch of sauce over it. So be mindful of your portion sizes, mm -hmm. you know, be mindful. And one of the things too, like I, I was talking to the North Carolina folks the other day, when you eat, be mindful of what you're eating and taste your food. You know, Charles Keller is a, a famous Michelin star chef out in California. And he said that after three bites, you're eating, you're not tasting your food anymore. Mm -hmm. So enjoy your food, take a breath, relax, taste it. Oh, that's a really Make good sure taste. Slow, eat slow. We yeah. talk about, yeah. we tell a lot of people, you know, make sure that every bite you chew at least 10 times. Right. Make gravy. Yeah. 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 And just yeah. And that way you're, you, you're slowing yourself down, put your fork down in between bites. Don't like mm -hmm. hover over yeah. your, your food. So that nobody's going to take it from you. It. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's really, those are also really good strategies, you know, so some yeah. different components to this, some of this is just behavioral strategies, which is kind of mm -hmm. what we're talking about now. Some of this is actual food strategies. Some of it is, you know, supplemental strategies, what supplements will be beneficial. And then, you mm -hmm. know, just you have to believe that this is possible. I mean, you're a perfect example of somebody that has had such a major turnaround. I mean, you, you know, you it's, you know, you've lost weight, your energy level is up, you know, the, the perp, there was like a discoloration in your lower legs that has cleared is mo mm -hmm. you know, on the process of clearing. I mean, there's so many health things that you start to see in somebody uh -huh. that has dropped their, their blood sugar. Yeah. And it's a pleasure yeah. to have you on to talk about the experience and, you know, you know, what's good funny about that too is like i used to bite my cheek all the time mm. when i ate i would always bite my cheek and now that the inflammation's gone nothing yeah like it hasn't i haven't bit my cheek in over here amazing so tell yeah. everybody where to find you and like what they because you have recipes on your website that people mm -hmm. can use to help reverse their diabetes you have you know uh vegan recipes that are on there that you can tr you know practice with and learn mm -hmm. you know so tell us a little bit about where people can find you and where they can get these these benefits yeah absolutely well we're at chefforhealth.com and one of the things that we do is we like to take and take like a regular meat um meatloaf and then we'll take a tvp meatloaf and put them side by side with ketchup on both of them and we actually make our own ketchup because every time you squirt a bottle of ketchup it's two teaspoons of sugar mm. hopefully not high for virtuous coin syrup but um but yeah so we are actually setting up some different seminars um some different classes and stuff that you can come take or if you want i actually have a grocery shopping um service on my service page so we can come out and like, I'll grocery shop with you. We'll go through a menu and, and try to figure out what works. I also have a thing on the top of my page. It says your journey. And it's a little quick survey of why, why do you want to do what you want to do? Why do you want to stop taking medicine? Are you, are you trying to prove something to yourself? Are you trying to save money? 
you know, why are you doing that? So fill out the survey, send it to me. We'll start a chat and, you know, you can always, my phone number's out there. You can always text me or give me a call if you want. But um, yeah, just chefforhealth.com. We have, like I said, services. I can come in and do private chef and I can show you how to, you know, eat a little bit healthier diet. Um, we can come in. I just do private parties. I've got a couple over the holidays here where we're just coming in and cooking for people, but we do have some dates available still um, awesome. for the holidays to come in and, and cook for your house. So for your household. I mean, but I mean, those, those are definitely some services that are not the norm. So that, you know, mm -hmm. people, so get out there, check out Dave's website at chefforhealth.com. And Dave, this was awesome. I'm looking forward to yeah. doing another topic with you at some point soon. Yeah. This is really, really great. And it's, you, you know, yeah. just so powerful to, you know, as a, as a uh, reverse diabetes uh, kind of representative. I mean, it's just so cool. Yeah. So, uh, and, keep it and, and if I can do it, you can do it. And it's just, how bad do you want it? And then, you know, and it's, it's, it's right in front of us. Yeah. It's not like we have to go out and buy special things. You know, it's right out of your garden or right out of your neighbor's garden or right out of the produce section. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's at our, at our fingertips. Yeah. Very cool. All right, my man, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you know, you. thanks to everybody that's, that took the time to watch this, uh, reach out to us if you need, if you need anything, Find Dave online and definitely take advantage of some of those services. Everybody have a great rest of your day, evening or morning, wherever you are. And we will see you soon.